morning. Uh, thank you, Professor uh, Ajesh. Uh, uh, thanks for this. Uh, do you need a? Huh? Do you need? I use that. You I use that. Use that mic. So. Uh, It's nice to be here, yes, uh, off and on, uh, talking about this fascinating uh, area of cognition, uh, which I got into last time, six years ago. I mean, keep changing. So, uh, one little bit of an ad. I've acquired a, a, a book of verses, uh, sci, sci verses, scientific verses, which I call the uh, Power of Two of Numbers and Words. Uh, it's on the, it's linked on the CSA homepage, uh, the PDF uh, of 64 verses. Now, I, I'm going to read hard copy. I made 64 hard copies and it's just going to drop uh, when I leave it to the suggestion of hard copy. So, uh, the point is uh, uh, these numbers and words uh, have been uh, 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 intriguing me for a while. And those are nice, nice objects which I used to love. And all of us love both numbers and words. And, uh, so, uh,
and there are two chapters which are just spectacular. I just want glimpses of that. And the second, the, you know, the kind of the counterpart of the words is this, uh, lots of uh, uh, philosophic as well as uh, foundational issues uh, and experimental and analytic issues on uh, or dealing with this uh, subject of words and, and mind. How words captured my experience as a writer and uh, some uh, first six chapters. Six out of the first eight or nine chapters in the author names. So I just want to pick illustrations to cite the point and just be for thinking about this. And uh, well, there are a lot of uh, metaphors when uh, dealing with thinking, uh, in particular numbers and words. And one other thing which I've cited somewhere maybe in this is this uh, recent work of uh, Daniel Kahneman on uh, called this thinking. Uh, come on, come on. Uh, fast and slow. That there are uh, two systems in the our cognitive apparatus. Uh, the first one uh, fast and the second one slow. The system one is fast, system two is slow. There are I mean, a huge number of uh, our own insightful uh, intuitions we have about these when uh, you know, think about things. So in some sense the fast system and slow system also correspond to where we deal with uh, numbers and words uh, quickly and slowly. Uh, effortlessly Effort fully, and so on, and uh, so some of the illustrations in these uh, papers and these books I put show off for you. Uh, first part on the uh, now numbers. So I mean, it's, it's a difficult task for uh, an entrant for five years immersed into this. Uh, we have a complete capture of all these fantastic ideas. So let's see some ideas. So there is a thing about uh, numeracy and literacy, and uh, Simple uh, questions to ask are uh, how much of that goes are innate and how much of them are uh, developed uh, in Dutch. So uh, there is a sense, this notion of uh, uh, elemental forms of uh, numeracy in uh, animals, and uh, there are a huge lot of uh, experiments and uh, 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 what are neuropsychological studies on these. On, uh, Primitive forms of animals uh, or, or lowly animals and uh, so on. But um, of course, you know, let me start quickly. Uh, I'm just going to just get some of the ideas in my uh, understanding of these things. But, uh, the, the, the bullets are pointers to other studies which are uh, you know, extant in our literature. So uh, there's this thing about uh, things which uh, animals which can do a uh, Now we'll come to Doing arithmetic, recognizing stuff of numbers. That is the comparability, com com comparableness between quantities. So there's a thing about uh, the quantitative association which you form about numbers, as well as the symbolic uh, way you associate those numbers and form whatever operations and so on. So the thing about uh, doing arithmetic, this is a basic take on a very anecdotal story about a particular German uh, case. And uh, apparently, you know, when I mentioned magic shows, people also show something like the dogs and so on. You, you put one and a two and a, then uh, you put five, it doesn't do anything. You put three, it just uh, shows a great recognition. Uh, it evinces recognition and is supposed to have done that. Now, uh, the thing was that uh, there are uh, the question always is that, of course, it recognizes the answer, but uh, did it really do the arithmetic in what? And uh, the whimsical thing about that was uh, probably there are many other cues uh, which the experimenter enforces on the on the participant, uh, which the participant uses in a, in a kind of reverse psychological take to give the answer. So it's actually it's the experimenter's mind, and so in the conversations of these things. The very, very imperceptible to humans kind of cues offered by the trainer, uh, maybe a, a small wink or something, when the correct answer is shown, the animal recognizes quickly enough to respond. So it's it's like a uh, not actually doing that, but recognizing some other cues. So that's one way of this. But then, so in order to do experiments of uh, really to figure out whether uh, the mental processes it, do involve manipulating this stuff to do arithmetic. For example, uh, for the moment, I should be quite careful and, and uh, 
there are, this is what one learns from cognitive neuropsychology and so on. So how to do experiments, and, uh, which we are beginning to understand. Uh, you know, you have to remove lots of extraneous influences which might color the uh, decision and uh, close the analysis. So uh, there are things about offering uh, auditory cues on tones, uh, about uh, uh, number of uh, pulses and the duration of the pulses, and then uh, you try to figure out first level of coping with uh, numbers uh, as to what is it you recognize. Is it, is it the quantity associated with that number is what it appears you all seem to recognize quite uh, quickly. In fact, quite quickly, quite early in evolution, uh, uh, both phylogenetically and even uh, in human evolution, very quickly. That is, uh, for example, distinguishing two versus eight uh, is, is just uh, two tones, auditory pulses versus eight tones. So the eight tone input is bigger than the two tone input is the is the conclusion which uh, the, uh, <coughs> the cognitive powers are simply endowed with, and uh, that that just is some more interesting examples. So schedule and uh, they have it. They build a little network simulator of an accumulated model for extraction of number from the environment, meaning you know the distinct, distinguishing uh, the, the the count of a certain set of objects is something which is quite early and uh, or gets quite early, and then uh, uh, this this experiment demonstration is there. Uh, here is the case where the carefully controlled experiments are real, but it's independent of the, the, the nature of the object, the shape of the object, the color, and other phenomena associated with the object, but the pure numeracy of the set of objects. And somehow they are able to uh, demonstrate that one is able to uh, recognize them. Uh, so number recognition is independent of shape, size, mode. There exists uh, number detecting neurons. Now, uh, there are better papers in the neurons and numbers, number neurons and so on. Uh, Contemporary uh, neuroscience uh, has been greatly helpful with the advances in, of course, the uh, measuring technologies like MRI and PET and so on, to actually uh, say something uh, close to the kind of hypothesis that there are regions, regions of interest which uh, cope with uh, quantitative uh, body module, uh, some kinds of distinguishing modules, and so on. Uh, so, the uh, thing is about uh, uh, a set of objects or something, it's a, all about estimation, it's about uh, the, the, let's call it the phenomenon of uh, numerosity, detection, or, or it, it, it numerousness in equivalent word of French, and uh, some kind of uh, approximate thing. So, this approximate again you would have encountered uh, in, uh, in uh, human. Cognitive apparatus working. Uh, a lot of it has to do with uh, approximate and fuzzy. And in some sense, there is something about the quantitative estimation and uh, thereby compare uh, sizes, volumes, uh, counts, uh, and so on, quite roughly, uh, very quickly. And uh, uh, so that's all. So, so it, it is. It is uh, is uh, exemplified in this uh, game experiment with uh, uh, humans are uh, reasonably difficult to do it. Very carefully controlled it. The whole field of you know, several types of scientists work on these kinds of things. And this is about the uh, um, evolutionary cognitive uh, apparatus of the human. And this apparently seems to be a, some kind of a proto uh, estimation module. Uh, even before, which is, uh, which is, um, Expressed. In fact, even before the uh, phenomenal lexical explosion, you know, about 18 months, uh, there is a big lexical explosion in the, the human uh, development. But uh, even prior to that, there uh, were well, some experimental results of this kind. Now, there's a very curious thing you see about numbers, which are uh, what is this uh, the range? The lexical explosion refers to the really the number of uh, lexical. <coughs> Tokens which you accumulate, a huge number, uh, that is two hundreds, two thousands, maybe. 
And there's the, the numbers uh, or numeracy is not of a fact. One, two, three. In fact, some sense to say one, two, three are the most popular things. In fact, the one and two and three. So it seems to be uh, the module for recognizing the oneness, the twoness, and the threeness seems to become simple. Uh, it seems to arrive bundled with that. And, um, and of course, you know, there are, there are some of them. Um, now, these experiments, uh, very early experiments, actually, which uh, to do with uh, uh, demonstrating uh, this, obviously, are done with uh, fairly young babies, maybe less than two years or one year or one year, even before the lexical thing. Uh, so, uh, so uh, you know, we place rows of mark and uh, uh, surprise them by uh, removing without their knowledge and then check whether they are indeed surprised and so on and so forth. Yeah. Uh, but it has very wonderfully clever ways of doing experiments with the babies. It is safe to say, again, you know, the numerosity is something which is uh, detected independent of the way this thing is uh, organized and uh, structured and so on. Uh, there are ways to do these experiments today, work at this. Uh, uh, so essentially, if you must have placed two more groups, uh, three more groups, and one row, uh, nearly equal rows, or Distance rows, uh, rows with the distance spacing between them, and so on. So, if you have a lot of them, there seems to be some recognition between the oneness and the uh, uh, Okay, now there's one thing about uh, this uh, business of uh, count. You know, when we talk about uh, the finite, uh, countable, and uh, uncountable sets, uh, there's some kind of an ordering. Okay. Okay. And the orderings. Uh, the least element and the successor relationships, which are all built into basic uh, mathematical axioms of the and axioms and of the set theory, uh, are fine, they're exact. Okay. One uh, take which I like, mentioned and probably with the is, is that uh, the cognitive apparatus of the humans apparently seems to not really bother about that uh, thing, divisions between exact finiteness, the exact countability. And the nature of the continuum, the uncountable. <coughs> now, for all, everything is something like a continuum with some approximate demarcations about the smallness, the medium, the sizeness, the largeness, and so on. So, we will see some other examples of what I mean. So, uh, this business of uh, even ordinal competence, ordinal competence. This is successor relationship is um, green by the mental apparatus considered to data. So it's very strange. Now you, you can distinguish quantitatively the thing between uh, oneness, twoness, and threeness, but can't say oneness is uh, before twoness, before threeness, and so on until the data. Right? And that comes actually it comes with a certain uh, analogic apparatus, which will be rough demarcations of this much is this, this much is this. This much is greater than this much, and so on. Um, so, of course, you know, there are, uh, this is an uh, illustration from some kind of uh, uh, lending some kind of a credence to uh, uh, the anthropological evolution of uh, numbers and so on. And uh, apparently, you know, all, almost all many systems in the world, uh, particularly uh, writing, which have come about uh, after, of course, uh, have this three stroke thing. It's, 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 I mean, it's not a proof of any kind, but then, uh, you know, the one stroke, two stroke, and three stroke is probably the easiest to do. But some, for some reason, you know, you don't do four stroke, and uh, they are surprised that the Roman thing, why did they have four stroke? You know, I mean, we, we, you know, so, so you can even see, uh, there's just some examples, and these are historically uh, documented by very good. Uh, Similar people uh, that the one, two, three or, um, have a visual form which also convey the the quantity quantitative information about that thing which it represents. So there you go. Uh, up to three strokes. So I think there's some mental stack uh, barrier between one, two, three, and uh, many examples here. Smallness and 
So now there are some things about uh, data, and um, I guess in some future dates, since uh, as a part of the program which we have to work with, we have some eye tracker experiments on which uh, we can do some of these uh, experiments again, and uh, which will actually monitor the very moment right from the data. Now, the last thing, this is even where the, the, the humans uh, take about uh, 600 milliseconds. See, it just takes half a second to recognize anything. I mean, what you think you are recognized in general, face pictures, numbers, color, shape, about a half a second you pan and you sort of sink to think that you find. So, 600 milliseconds to detect uh, or count one, two, three dots, independent of uh, <coughs> Generally, they say the one, two, or three. Roughly, it's split as one, two, three takes 600 seconds. Some kind of baseline period. But after that, it's uh, very intriguing. And this is what I meant. We can actually check it out by right, right, experiments in some different forms. Every, it's a kind of a linear growth with uh, some amount of uh, I mean, effortfulness. You spend 200 milliseconds of effort for every part. So after that, beyond three, it takes 400 to 300 milliseconds, and not only that, uh, there are error rates which are higher. And these error rates which are higher, which have been uh, uh, checked at the experiment, tell that there is this business of uh, one plus two plus three plus comes bundled, rest of it to sort of uh, what you know, even the recognition of numbers and plots. So uh, these are the experiments which are there. Now, recognition of one, two, three without apparent counting. Uh, okay. Now, in fact, I just mentioned this book. Subitization uh, thing. But suddenly, you know, it's like one, two, or three, suddenly it pops up. So the, there's an extremely fast system one apparatus uh, uh, modules. Later on, the module delineation areas also reasonably get uh, understood today. Uh, and yes, um, there's a suddenness about one, two, three, but beyond that, you will pay for two. Um, of course, it's instantaneous, I mean, uh, it has to take some present uh, uh, firing rates and things like that, take about uh, half a second. Uh, it's about the time to read a word and read it. Instead, instantly, uh, the uh, uh, average uh, number of size words, five, six, okay, uh, between four and eight, all of them take about uh, this thing. Uh, as long as most of them are familiar. Same with familiar face recognition. Unfamiliar, of course, you know, you sort of think about it, but generally, the flash. The flash is about 500 milliseconds, and you really see something. Okay, now there is a thing about. Uh, uh, apparently, it's very fascinating that the last 20, 10, 15 years, uh, increasingly uh, getting devoted to these kinds of studies, uh, very, very large number of groups, and of course, bolstered by uh, many of the schools which have very easy tools and. Uh, I tools and all that, and uh, one with which you can conduct reasonably uh, uh, insightful experiments on uh, humans. Uh, because a lot of information, you know, in the field of cognitive science, have been available to the excellent uh, uh, pioneers in this field by doing experiments on patients and so on. And uh, uh, those are there, but today we are doing them. So, uh, one of the things is that there is this clear indication that uh, the visual areas of the occipital uh, lobe are certainly involved in uh, recognizing anything. But then there is this um, uh, parietal uh, areas which are getting more and more implicated in the numeric uh, stuff. Its counterpart for the verbal or uh, uh, literate word uh, thing is this uh, temporal thing. And uh, the temporal areas, the occipital areas, the visual area, and the parietal area, which are the reasons with uh, some things like quantities in general, uh, get all uh, tied together, all in fact together. So now, we'll see some data about this quite interesting thing. That approximating large numbers, there is something called a distance effect, uh, which is uh, saying. There is a distance between the, the, the symbol which represents that and, or a quantity with the symbol represents. Like for example, uh, 10 and 13. Uh, in some sense, the numeric distance, or I call it the ordinal metric on the integers, is, is 3, 3 apart. 
three steps apart. Now, recognition of this, that these two are apart by these two steps, is, is sort of extrapolated in exact proportion, and that's a very interesting thing. So that means you know, your, your ability to distinguish between 20 and 26 is uh, uh, same as 10 and 13, but not necessarily the same as between 20 and 21. Now, that is something which is repeated in the serenity in experimentation and so on. Very, very, very intriguing. That is, when, when things are too close, your apparatus is analogic. So it gives you some very, what are called fuzzy boundaries between quantities. So you are really figuring out. So it takes a little more effort. So when they are reasonably far apart, your analogic boundaries, which are sort of probably built in,
500 milliseconds to 90 to 100 milliseconds to pause. Okay. Uh, so this, this uh, so distress is uh, distress times. Uh, reflexive access to number B. Uh, okay. Now those things were something about quantity and little more than quantity is this audible representations, uh, the arrangements and so on. And one of this is to do with uh, again deciding the the uh, it, it, it sort of illustration of the yes. Yeah. Deciding that eight and nine are uh, uh, too close, it takes longer uh, than saying two and nine are uh, too far apart. Now, two and nine, it's, 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 it's kind of reflexive thing, the far apart. Now, the other thing is this comprehension reflex, which says uh, given a list like this uh, to memorize, and then uh, the experiment is to probe uh, for presence of a number x in that list. Okay, so that's the experiment. So the list is given, a small list, six lines on it, over it. Now I'm going to throw some rope number. You have to tell whether that is in that list or not. Oh, very curious, you know. One would think that uh, uh, whatever it is, you know, if I, it's not in there, I'm not there. That's all you have So I said, well, you'll say, of course, no. If I say one, no. But if I say five, you may have to think a little more. Something like you know that it's close to too close to the elements of the set. So telling a more distant probe one is not in L, the list given list, is much less effort or easier to to comment than a near probe which is uh, not. Okay. Uh, okay. Now I think uh, I, I just. Because it's a fascinating world of things about the distinction between quantities and the representation. Uh, there's a lot about the probable representation, the retention, and the recall, all associated with your uh, the cognitive hardware, uh, as you said. So there's, there's a lot of different rules, both in this case, all right, in general, but the, apparently the right hemisphere. Parietal uh, lobe, there is uh, something called tips, uh, horizontal, inferior, parietal, uh, sulcus, <coughs> tips of sulcus and cryo, uh, kind of mountain fold in the cortical folds. Apparently, there is this parietal area uh, very close to that have been localized. Uh, whereas the words are to do with the other uh, temporal lobe, cryo. Angles, uh, angle variant and so on. So there are very fascinating things about uh, trying to figure out this localization. So this one, two, three module, the distance uh, separation, all these are pretty good. Uh, now, the representation, retention, and recall, and all the strengthenings and reinforcement which you go along with them, have to do with certain kinds of encodings. Okay. Now, this is another big mystery of this, uh, the lowest levels of uh, uh, cognition. Of course, neurons do matter, but from neurons to, uh, uh, of course, not single neuron, but uh, aggregates of uh, at least a few thousand neurons, or maybe a few hundreds of thousands of neurons to, to, to some kind of encoding. Now, the auditory and the visual fields are being studied very extensively. It's uh, very, very pioneering uh, works of various people. <coughs> about actually figuring out this encoding, uh, some kind of coding, a lot of coding, uh, names of there which I have talked in the second, second thing that I put in. You know, there's something about a coarse coding, there's a fine coding, uh, so on. So these have to do with the way the, the neurons, those hundreds of thousands of neurons in some small uh, one millimeter cube volume, uh, area, uh, volume, work in synchrony. Some kinds of synchronization of firings, the rates, red coding, the rates of firing, and the concomitant tuning uh, curves associated with those rates seem to convey something about the representation. So, in some sense, uh, if you want to say one stroke, just one bit is enough, maybe two strokes, two bits, and so so many rounds are firing with some rate, and that would represent time. 
So this is where the analogic representation probably, probably uh, is like that. Uh, uh, because the thresholds have reached a certain uh, finding rate, then you say it's two, two it's three. So some playback boundaries are there at uh, the lower orders, but after that it's some kind of fuzzy boundaries. So uh, these are can be identified, and, uh, so it's a very exciting uh, to try to do something in this. Okay, now numbers. Now, that's all about numbers. Now, what I want to rest of you take you through is, uh, is this thing about words. <coughs> numbers are also words. One, sorry. So, uh, the second part of this is on that, uh, some kind of explication of uh, some of these uh, papers. So, as, as the titles uh, reflect, uh, how? Okay, the, the titles reflect. Uh, language, uh, thought, and interface, some things about universal phenomena versus the relativistic behavior. Universal and variation in the lexicon of linguistic concepts. Uh, language specificity and what is a conceptual structure. So, and uh, categories in the mind, uh, how do you essentially categorize stuff in the mind and uh, categories in uh, the language? And uh, uh, okay, then that the philosophic rumination on uh, the last two are about uh, whether language implies thought or thought implies language. Mathematically, then you say, in fact, on the year, both imply uh, both ways uh, and establish it and uh, so on. So there are uh, very amusing uh, uh, history of science in this kind of thing. So, okay. uh, so I probably will uh, just uh, rush through some salient aspects of uh, uh, speed. Uh, uh, okay. Now, this the direct discipline of thought independent of language. Sorry, for our. Now, the language thought interface uh, post relies on a basis, uh, backing thoughts and feelings into words. Some, some prioritized points about the insights and things we more and more elaboration and pointers to other literature. Uh, unpacking the uh, packing uh, thoughts and feelings into words is one, uh, one course of action. And the other is the whatever you want to recognize something, unpack the uh, linguistic input to me. Uh, there are things about conceptual representations, the uh, mental framework, mental ease, mental language, mental, 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 mental language, or mental ease, uh, which is again uh, thought to be either linguistic or uh, non linguistic. So, we see some examples, both, both relations. But, uh, the general uh, idea. That this language part interface can be thought about as uh, something like when I put the single dimensional arrow, it says some correspondence. It's, it's like it's, it's like uh, dictionary thesaurus here, uh, it's like uh, encyclopedia uh, relationships. So, what do you find in dictionary? What do you find in a thesaurus? What do you find in encyclopedia? And the correspond the kinds of relationships they bear with each other is what this language and thought, uh, what they bear with each other. Uh, word meanings are uh, aligned to the coherent uh, monetary terms. This is, uh, um, meanings will work against correlational structure of word. Uh, word. Uh, okay, so there are, there are different types of words of uh, meanings and then the, 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 the transgressions between these meanings and so on. So in category of uh, word meaning, Typical words like this, for example, they are, they are associated with certain particular actions and then many uh, big words words versus uh, cross category word meanings. Uh, in particular, uh, words uh, of causation, of, you know, like cooking, gardening, etc., and then of manner, and so on, and all kinds of things to say, and so on. So there are two types of categorizations. Uh, 
Well, these categorizations, or they, do they ramify across uh, cultures? Uh, or does the language of a culture uh, constrain its uh, internal capitalization? Is the debate between the universalist versus uh, uh, religious? Then there's this uh, fact of cross-cultural uh, cognitive awareness, uh, uh, how they how they uh, how they are uh, by studying the linguistic uh, diversity across a variety of uh, domains. Uh, for example, <coughs> the naming names, words for this, perceptual stuff like color, abstract stuff like. Uh, Okay, 
So this is there's some some kind of a compilation uh, evidence to the uh, existence of some set of semantic primes of kind uh, uppercase uh, words. Uh, the universal prime. Then it is studying some cross cultural studies and so on. So you can categorize them as these. Uh, so, what is NSM? Uh, okay. So they are bold enough to venture into a natural semantic meta language. And uh, I like this in the sense, it, it, it looks like a nice meta language you like to uh, talk about it in computer ease. Uh, Comment comparing all of these primes, you put them there, print other words and things like And uh, apparently, even to reduce written down to a small set, you know, think we want more. Uh, studies of these kinds of words from various uh, languages and uh, languages which are not so prolific, like in English and I think that any of these people are studying them. There are tables of this kind there. There are tables and uh, first order statistics information on these things. They provide them. The word that realizes a semantic prime is an exponent. Now, this is another cute thing which I like from uh, uh, number theory. In number theory, you know, I just go on my from high school. Every teacher is uh, uniquely expressed as a product of prime powers. And the uniqueness comes from the prime, uh, exponent of the prime. And that's the uniqueness. The exponent is unique for every prime which goes with your integer. So that's the exponent we call it. Here they call it the, 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 the expression of the semantic prime in a form in that language construct is the prime, not even the exponent. <coughs> so, polysemic uh, studies of short and exponent counts in of this, this, this. Cross linguistic variation in emotion terms, uh, uh, other things, but best, best stuff. Like emotional terms. And uh, uh, there are some data on this we have in the, in the next picture. Recently we compiled some sense evaluation of uh, feeling words and, and various reviews and so on. And so there's something about uh, uh, expression of uh, feelings and uh, emotions into words, which seem to be some kind of core primes, core semantic primes. Uh, those Six or seven, seven listed there. Also, the corresponding what are called facial access codes, uh, which are human beings are adept at uh, recognizing. Uh, now, this is about expression of uh, visual cue to the visual field and then to the uh, emotion area. So, of course, you know, if this emotion area uh, of uh, hippocampus and amygdala and similar values and so on are also implicated in memory and uh, emotion things and so on. So there's a lot of tire internal. Okay, so there is this primes of this kind. And uh, 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 oh, now see that this this primes include something about this about space. Uh, in fact numbers Space and time, they are sort of getting uh, prime status in, in the cognitive apparatus. So, universal <coughs> representation of space also on the innate, and there are some arguments to that effect. Uh, uh, they are called spatial structure, SPS, uh, S, work SPS. Basically, the meaning of components of shape, uh, manner of motion, uh, also interpreted in uh, SPS, interplay between uh, uh, this conceptual structure and uh, spatial structure. Uh, it's quite strong. Uh, I put question mark there. There are lots of debate arguments, counter arguments, and so on.